Welcome to Raw I'm Down. I'm not ready. What do you mean you're not ready? <laughs> We're rolling down, pal. We don't got time. It's That's okay. I've been rolling down for the last hour. Martin's colonoscopy's at 4 o'clock, and we need to get him there. <laughs> it's I'm, a, true. I'm <laughs> to smack down his colon, Oh, buddy. my God. Who is that? We're getting, you're shit. getting it on. Nico thought he could do do something. What? Over, I guess on, I... over on the blue brand. Uh uh-uh. uh. We got I'm Joe here today from Smack Up. Oh no. Yes, the newest sample from my colon. Joe oh. is here. <laughs> oh. Busting him up, baby. Is that reverse, Joe? I'm Who, giving you guys you a doing, biopsy. Hmm? Why aren't you moderating this damn thing? Why is he here? You were on the last one, pal. What do you mean? Yeah, well, I'm special. I'm on Raw now. Come on now. Yeah, oh, special okay. keyword here. We got a full crew. We got Dave. Nice. We got Emerald. You know, Marty. And you got Nico. You got the Raw crew. Easy. On a good they episode. Put on, they put on a show just for me, baby. Hey, I hope you guys had fun with all those handicap main events. Not for me. V- fucking whoever's running Raw, they knew. A superstar's walking into town. They put on a good show, can I say? Tonight yeah, was wacky. It was crazy. Yeah, your champion actually won a match. Yeah, well, and we're yeah. gonna talk about what happens on the show. It's wild. Yeah, well, you know, what happened to your voice, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> he got well, the unwitch in there. He got too excited. Now he's given up. His voice said goodbye. He heard, right, do, so- do I sound do I sound normal again? Yeah, I don't know what Somebody happened. Somebody told him they he would have to talk about wrestling. He went into a hole. Oh, yeah, I can't do that. Where are the subway pretzels, dude? Get into that opening little segment, pal. A title match? Not right. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not you, Joe. Main event, Marty. You. Uh, I forgot how how things work around here. Yeah, yeah we have the main event as the opening, <laughs> and pretty much also right. the main event because Vince said I'm changing the main event, but he changed this, and then also there's a main event later. Anyway, Triple H comes out, does not spit out tomatoes like a wildebeest or oh. whatever. He's just in his little undies. He's coming he's out to the ring. Surprisingly dry today. I don't know. He's Yeah, he's real dry because John Cena's not out here. He'll get soaked when Cena shows up. <laughs> but he's like, listen, I'm not here to talk for 45 minutes like I do every week. I'm here to fight. Jonathan, get out here. Lillian starts really rushing the intros for this 95-minute segment. Uh, hey, did you guys know that they're at Texas Tech University? Texas. This week, yeah, they only say it. I think seven times is what I have written down. It's probably more than that. Jr. gritting also, it through his teeth. Yeah, he's a real Oklahoma boy. Speaking of Jr. again, thank fuck he's here. The commentary is infinitely better. Praise. With him, yeah. Here what the fuck? And and just coach. all the stars are coming out. I love it. I love yeah. not having Coach or fucking Joey Styles getting his meatball marinara ganked from him. Joey cut one of the best promos that's been on Raw like all year and then just left. It's yep. kind of upsetting. Yeah, it, it honestly is. Peacock closed captions are unable to understand Jim Ross because he gets hit with a lot of indistinct in the closed captions when he <laughs> sort of starts going low and muttering. Yes, he does. So Triple H with undies is out. Lillian starts introing John, but Vince's music hits, and Triple H looks very upset. Vince saunters down with a big old smile. All right, I got great news. I'm changing the main event, what? which is also this match. We're going to have the Intercontinental and WWE titles on the line. And here's how this is going to work. And I need to spend seven minutes explaining how this all is supposed to happen. So this is now a handicap Texas Tornado, all championships on the line sort of match. So a Texas Tornado means everybody's legal at the same time. Every championship on the line means if a champion gets pinned, the match is over and they lose their belt. If a champion pins somebody, the match is over. So what you have set up here is John Cena and Rob Van Dam versus Triple H, Shelton Benjamin, and Chris Masters. So if hypothetically Triple H pinned John Cena, Triple H is the WWE champion, and the match is over. Rob Van Dam is fine. If John Cena just pins somebody, that match is over. Everybody keeps their belts. Everyone's happy. 
real weird setup for a match that's basically just a bunch of fighting that the camera can't keep up with. Mm-hmm. So Vince lays out all of this for five minutes. Triple H is like, Dad, please, why? And then starts just screaming at the ref. John Cena runs out, starts fighting Triple H. Ben Shelton and Chris Masters come down. They all just start kicking John Cena in the head. Rob Van Dam runs out. Everybody starts to pair off. And what you get is basically Shelton and Chris Masters beating the shit out of Rob Van Dam for, like, probably 12 minutes. While Triple H and Cena fight on the outside. Uh, Rob Van Dam and Chris Masters form one of the more elaborate series of Irish whips I've ever seen. Which just results in Chris Masters being knocked over the rope. Back from your break, Triple H and John Cena are now in the ring, and the other three guys are outside dead. This is basically how this works. Either Triple H and Cena are in the ring, or the other three guys are in the ring. And there's a guy in the front row with a digital camera. And Ty, what is this guy doing with this digital camera? Oh, dude, you you know he's getting in 144p. He he, he went to a Raw show. He didn't go to, like, you know, WrestleMania, so he doesn't got the 240p. Okay. Yeah, it's a so, little cheaper. Yeah. So Raw is only worth 144p. WrestleMania is 240. What is SummerSlam worth? Listen, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll get the 360p. I don't know. What when does 360p? 1080p. SummerSlam. Oh, the no, you can't. Year. You can't get that high Always. in 2006. Uh, buy your buy your Kodak stocks now. They might have new technology by then. That's yeah, what maybe. I'm saying. Well, we'll see what uh, Apple does at uh, you know, the press conference in September. They'll never do anything. Don't buy Apple stock. They're going to go under soon. What's wrong all with my the Macintosh? All my 2006 listeners. Oh. What, the stupid the stupid computer, like a grape shell looking computer yeah. with a big purple on the back of them? Yeah. They have that shit in my computer lab because it's 2006 and I'm four years old. Oh. That's not true for those of you at home. <laughs> I want you everyone know to know that the first 1080p display was shown April 19th, 2006. Oh. <gasps> Oh, we're and the here. first one wow. that was affordable was what 2016. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. All right. Also, 3D television is going to be huge. Watch out, folks. Oh, dude, I'm putting all my 3D, chips in dude. It. I can't. I can't wait for 3D. I'm, I'm putting all my Subway pretzels in it. <laughs> yeah. Play your Killzone 3 in 3D with the PlayStation television. It's going to be huge, folks. Folks. I want to play Haze. <laughs> Whoa. Haze. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I All will right. be there playing the demo for 30 hours. All right, check out Haze on You Don't Have to Play This, I oh, guess. God. Everybody's got some shit to say about it. Anyway. Oh, documents on it. Yeah. Back to outside brawling. There's just a lot of shit happening, but also nothing is happening. Everybody's just punching each other. Seeing that Rob Van Dam are generally getting the worst of it. Uh, Chris Masters and Benjamin now throw Rob Van Dam in the ring, continue kicking him. And then Triple H rolls into the ring, punches him once, and just kind of wanders off. Rob Van Dam just keeps getting killed. Triple H hits a knee drop as a fun prank on him, wanders off again. Shelton hits the loudest heel kick of all time on Rob Van Dam. That was cool. Shelton goes to pin him. Triple H has to stop this pin because he wants the WWE title. And if Shelton pins Rob Van Dam, then the match is over. So he pulls him off like, hey man, come on. Chris Masters puts in the Master Lock. Triple H and Shelton go to break it up for the same reason. They all start fighting. Then Rob Van Dam gets up and kills everybody. Clears out everybody, but Shelton goes top rope. Triple H pushes him off. John Cena re-enters the ring, kills everybody else. Jim Ross claims that Cena is fighting for his career. What does Jim Ross know? (laughs) Many... And then everybody starts countering a whole bunch of bullshit, whatever. I can't explain what's happening because five people are doing their own shit in this match. Cena puts Shelton in the SCFU. Chris Masters now breaks it up. Just everybody's in the ring fighting now. And we get into an elaborate finishing sequence. Uh, Rob Van Dam frog splashes Chris Masters. The Triple H pedigrees Rob Van Dam. Cena also FUs Chris Masters. So Chris Masters is dead as hell. And Rob Van Dam is somewhere unconscious. I forget exactly what happens to him. So Triple H pedigree Cena. So you have Rob Van Dam and John Cena dead in the ring. Triple H gets on top of him. But a second before, kind of off camera, you see Shelton Benjamin crawl over and start to pin Rob Van Dam a little bit before. The Mike Kyoto counts three. Neither Cena or Rob Van Dam kick out. 
but Shelton is your winner because he got there a little bit first. So yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. The, uh, the the play here, right? The, the the ref calls for it. You know, Triple H, he's got his hands up. Shelton, he's got his hands up. Triple H thinks he's got it. And then Lillian on the mic goes, and new intercontinental. Triple H is like, come on, you see man. see his soul leave his face. He was just gone, yeah. dude. Yeah, he's so disappointed in this. Yep. Shelton gets it. He gets out of the ring right away. Him and Chris Masters go to have a party. Uh, Triple H just, just like so furious at referee Mike Chioda. He's like, look, yeah. dude, I'm going to kill you. And he hits him with a pedigree out of uh, his disgruntled anger and gets the hell out of there. Oh. And JR calls him hot. <laughs> it's true. He does. <laughs> So this match was a lot of, in terms of actual, like, ring stuff, nothing. Not too much happened until the end when everything happened. And I'm mad that now we're going to get John Cena and Triple H still, probably. But that was a cool finish. I like that. That was yeah. fun. I have some gripes about this match. If, uh, yeah, if any... Okay. Does it this match... have three letters? What? Does it have three letters? What do you mean? <laughs> No, 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 no. RVD was fine in this match. The only problem was, I think I yelled about this when I did a live watch, the psychology makes no fucking sense. And I'm going to yell about psychology, sorry. So you got a double title match, the Intercontinental Championship and the WWE Championship. Why the fuck would anybody want the IC title over the WWE title? John Cena's right there dead. They could have just thrown Triple H out of the ring and pinned him because he would have got the three. But instead he goes for Rob Van Dam. Well, well Shelton was on the ground, the closest person, and he could only crawl over. Yeah, was Shelton, right. reeling. Shelton was reeling from a from a spinning heel kick. You could have had a three on one WWE championship match. Just throw like well, R V D out of the ring, beat him up, because you got three people, and then you just so go, Okay, to, time to kill John Cena. To R V D's credit, there was a sequence where John Cena did get killed in the middle of the match. Um <clears throat> and then they had a moment where uh, Triple H and Shelton were trying to go for Cena, and then they get at it, arguing about it. Cena rolls out in the meantime, and then Chris Masters looks at RVD, who's knocked out in the ring, and like, oh, don't mind if I do, and puts him in the master lock <laughs> for a while. It's probably the smartest, the best thing Chris Masters has ever done. Martin's a real hater and, for not mentioning it. And the one other thing, Chris Masters was so out of place in this. Oh, he yeah. Should, did I not... assume he's Shelton's friend now. I haven't been watching. Why would they show. be friends? They they both want the same thing. Yeah, they're but... just yeah, they're just like mean boys, so they sort of hang out oh. together. Oh, sure. Well, no, so Chris Masters is like you know I uh, I think he's just a lonely guy because he's always teaming up with somebody. It's true. He can't do anything himself. No, he's like getting he's sick not of cool him. enough for Carlito anymore. It seems. Oh man, yeah. yeah. Well, well, he trying Carlito. to make Carlito jealous. Yeah, I think uh, so. He's so, a little well, busy. It's working. He's dating the Intercontinental Champion, yeah, who's but, way better than Carlito. Yeah, <laughs> but Joe, oh, I, I, I have to tell you this, like, because this, this fucking fi was infuriating watching. Like, So, the whole Carlito's uh, master lock split was basically... You know, Kalito fucking backstabs him, and then like two weeks later, Chris Masters comes out and says, "No, I betrayed you." Kalito's like, "Huh?" <laughs> and he beats him up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the epic, the what thing. what an epic own from Chris Masters. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, he, I, surely he got him. I I I I purposely lost the match because you I knew you would betray me, and, uh -huh. and then he was the heel. Yeah, I, remember at Mania was... when uh he purposely lost the match when he was trying to stop Carlito from getting pinned. It was all a plan. It was all, all a plan, plan for him to get kicked in the fucking head right as that happened. Dude, he's so good. <laughs> he's so he's good. He's the smartest person on the roster. So, you're not effective all of this. And Rob Van Dam is not off pack watch yet. I mean, he didn't really do anything, but that's not his fault. Neither him or Cena did too much. They basically just got beat up. Yeah, there's nothing minutes. they could really do. They got their <laughs> speed. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. RVD should have clutched that. Yeah, dude, what the he, hell? He tried to. He tried to he tried to put it uh he tried to clutch that one up. There was a sequence after the master lock was broken up 
uh, Triple H and Shelton start yelling at Chris Masters about it. And then RVD fucking 3v1s them all, spinning heel kicks and, and rolling whatever's rolling all not around. Enough rolling, not enough rolling thunder, dude. Not enough. Come on, smack up, dude. What the hell? He didn't Had frog splash off the eighth rope or whatever to kill them all. And just in watching this 3v2 Texas Tornado match, I have to say this. The only good teamwork I ever see from any episode I've watched thus far it comes from the Spirit Squad. That's yeah, why they're the tag team. number one fan. Yeah, that's why they're tag team champs. You gotta love it. And, yeah, and anyway. Spirit Squad. Anyway, then your WWE Unlimited moment. Again, why pay for this if they just show anything relevant that happens right after commercial? Truly. It, Todd or whatever his fucking name is is backstage like, hey, you fucking lost. Do you want to talk about it? And then Triple H just gives him an angry pouty face and walks away. Excellent face by Triple H. Todd Grisham nearly trips on all the cables, AV cables around him. It's pretty funny. The style back then is so bad because his suit, like, he probably <laughs> walked out, like, of the dressing room, you know, for the show. He's like, damn, I'm fucking dripped up. He's fucking, like, draped in cloth. It's insane. Yeah. It does him not fit him at all. I get him and Joey Styles confused because they both just have black hair, glasses, and a suit that's four sizes too big for them. <laughs> it's yeah, it's tragic, but hey, he's this is what he's got, man. It's, okay, it's a different time. Let him be. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, I know you just said that the only good teamwork is the Spirit Squad, but I mean this next segment has some pretty good teamwork. And Nico was here to from his hole to tell us all about it. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> all right, enthusiasm. Let's go. Yes. 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 Can we no. clip that? Can we clip that <laughs> yeah. down and put it on the soundboard? Yes, like Mr. Burns. Oh man! Yes. In, in six months, listeners, this is gonna fucking hit. I promise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I just remembered my segment about what's on during Raw on month on. Uh, TV Monday nights that I did like four months ago. You're gonna get it again, yeah. probably. Here I go to look it up. Anyway, women, <laughs> women, women, right? Women. So oh, Stratus comes off. Time to rock and roll. Ring. You know, I, I noticed the crowd was a little quieter, and I think it's because the arm sling was covering her cleavage. Which, remember, folks, it's two thousand. It wasn't covering all of it. Not all of it, but enough it, it, that this I is noticed... a this is a spiteful crowd. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't appreciate this from from Texans, not yeah. real Americans, I'd say. <laughs> never have been, never will be, no. forever fake Americans. Yep, yep. As your state your state is our. Your state belongs to the union. Yeah. You stupid cowards. Hey, yeah, horns down, bitch. I love that for smack up it's after we show JPL yell for fucking an hour. Anyways, so Trish Stratus comes out and. Again, it, it, real basic. She basically just calls out Mickey James. And, you know, Mickey James comes out. You know, she's looking. She's looking fine for champion. You know, she's looking like she's ready to cut some shit. Trish Trans, so come in the ring. Come in the ring. So, Mickey James obliges. Because Mickey James is thinking, ha, oh, this dumb idiot in a sling is going to beat me. Fat chance I'm gonna beat the shit out of Trish Stratus. So she gets in the ring to suck on around a bit. You know, Mickey James, if she was booked better, should know that something's up. Because Trish is just pacing around where at every other time Trish is coming up to her. I will say it's a small move because, you know, she's got the sling and all, the bad arm, so. Alright, fair enough. Then. Nah, I can't use that reference. Oh! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> now say oh, it. I'll cut baby. it out if I need to. Okay. From out of nowhere, Mickey James gets Pearl Harbored by Bath. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> A surprise you, attack. Oh. <laughs> okay. I told you guys, Nico's, Nico's come back different. See, yeah. if this was Smack Up Nico, he wouldn't have hesitated. He would have just fired, <laughs> pulled the trigger. Oh, boy, do we get plenty of that. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was fined $500 for that, uh, a couple of those. <laughs> no, you're fine. Side. And and just like Pearl Harbor before that, uh, Trish did, like, a, like, a, some, 
like a like a avoiding contortionist maneuver to avoid Mickey's clothesline attempt. Yep. What? Uh, and then goaded Mickey into being attacked from behind by uh, Beth. 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 Who I'm hearing is this is not her first appearance on the show. No. No. She came in yesterday and yesterday. Uh, <laughs> she came in last <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah, last week. And she basically just like and like it was like two to five minutes of Mickey and Beth just screaming nonsense at each other. High screech. Just... <laughs> that was like two to five minutes. I don't even remember what they said. It was just fucking like taking like your nails and scratching a chalkboard. Yeah, language beyond human comprehension we got. Yeah. Exactly. They so. were speaking the higher tongue of the gods. But we did get a name. So... Yeah. At... So Beth, you know, I'll say this: she looked better than most of the women talent Whoa. on this show. You can't say she... that. That's your yes, favorite. Who? All of the women. I do love all the women, but there is a hierarchy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I <laughs> for some people, I don't know. I mean, I know Smack Up loves Maria, even though she's not on the show. Bye. What do you mean by that? that? We, we no, we can't do that. <laughs> the the members of the Smack Up podcast, and you don't have to do this network. Refuse to comment on that. That's right. <laughs> no, what are your thoughts on Pearl Harbor, Joe? Yeah, what are your thoughts? Dude, when I think about it, I'm just like Triple H. I get pissed and I throw my water at my closet. <laughs> Fuck! Yeah, damn it! Fucking damn, they got us. Yeah, Fuck. but I. <sighs> Yeah, that's I feel you. But then this up, basically Trish comes out it's like, "Hey, you remember Beth? You screwed her too." And Mickey James is about as bewildered as I am at this promo. Like, are they gonna tell us how this happened? Is that next week? It seems like we're not supposed to know because the commentators also were like, "What the fuck are they talking about?" Yeah, no, exactly. But it, it it's kind of weird. That, like, I, I don't know. I thought it was a little weird. Like, because at first it just seemed like she just kind of ran in last week with no reason. And then this week she comes in. I, I guess they're building something. I just don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they're actually trying to build a story. It's crazy. It's, I'm not used to this in the women's roster. Like, yeah. once the lesbian angle died, I mean, they kind of stopped trying building stories. It's okay. We go back to familiar with some sexual harassment later. Oh, oh yeah. It's yeah, that's oh, run down. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, that's also, your woman, that's your woman of the night. Yeah, there's a there's a sign here that says Mickey James is bipolar, but it's spelled wrong. Good job, average Texas Tech <laughs> University student. Texas well, they don't Tech they don't they don't teach them how to spell until like sophomore year. So yeah, Texas Tech gets another mention in this segment. Jr. loves saying Texas Tech University, even though he's an Oklahoma fan. That's tough, man. Listen, speaking of bombs being dropped, Triple H is in the back, and he throws Taking his bottle shit. so fucking hard at the wall, and he's angry. He was thinking about Pearl Harvest. Fuck, yeah, they got fuck, us. they got us! I hope we Every do something time. about that. I hope we do something about that. Triple H reads the English. newspapers in chronological order. He got to 1941. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just like, it's just like Dave watching One Piece starting at the beginning. Triple H has been catching up with news. And then, you know, Japan's number one guy shows up, Shane McMahon. He's back, baby. Yes! Oh. And he said, he said, Triple H, I'm going to get right to the point. We had to do what we had to do. But anyway, Vince wants to collect on his favor that you did. And he's like, dude, what do you want me to do out there? That was bullshit. And Shane's like, you know, you owe us now, pal. You owe us. Hey, I don't want you to be a special guest ref anymore for the main event. I'm going to be the special guest ref. So Shane is the special guest ref of the main event now. But he wants Triple H to be in Kenny's corner. Just to make sure everything goes to plan. And Triple H is not happy because, you know, he's really upset at what he just read on the news. He just lost his title. You know, Shane comes in sympathizing with the enemy. And is the enemy. Triple H is having a bad day today, man. Poor guys, Emerald, dude. do you feel bad for Triple H? 
No. Emerald? <laughs> Beep. No. Do you feel bad for Triple H? No, never. Why? Oh, wow. Damn. Wow, come on. Why not? Fuck him. What do you do? No. He's a big baby. For what? What do you do? Later in the show, we'll find out Beep. why he's so mad. Okay. But for now, Emerald has... Uh, excuse me, not Emerald, number one Spirit Squad fan, Benny, is here to talk about oh, his Benny's favorite here? guys. The yeah. two perverts? Yeah, <laughs> Benny's tagged in to talk Benny. about the Spirit Squad eradicating these two freaks. Wait, dude. Anthony Michael Hall's in the crowd. Look, dude. Yeah, it's wait, part of that segment. I know, why he's just chilling Anthony there. Michael Hall here? Why is this man here? He's the star of the Dead Zone on USA Network. Yeah, Check man. out, we are not sponsored by this, maybe. Dead Probably zone. not. USA Network, is that even still around? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're still airing wrestling. Yes, Ross still on there for the time being, and SmackDown's about to be on it. You wow. Fucker. Everything's on streaming services now. Wow. That's not true. Cable survives. This guy looks like Bizarro Jeff Keighley. <laughs> Ooh, true. <laughs> I well, hate okay. video games. I hate because, video games. Because Kenny has a main event later with fucking Shawn Michaels. He's not here, not but the boys. rest of the Spirit Squad are here. So it's weird with just the four of them. They get up, they do their dances, show off their tag team belts. They do a little chant. Their, their cheers fucking suck. Come on. They're so out of sync. Their voices are just like fucking gravel. I what? what? Benny needs can to you... show up and whip them into shape. They're, can you name the Spirit Squad members that are on screen? That's what I was about to say. Who's in the match? Uh, no, today? I cannot. What do you mean? You don't know who's Wait, in the match? They're all the same. Th that's not true. They're know. all not Benny. Well, that's, yeah, that's you. I mean, that is true. Exactly. If I was there, if Benny was there, I'd whip those boys into shape. Well, to... uh, but who are they versing? What we got mean? Gold Dust. Yeah. And say it. What's his face? What's his name? No, I I'm gonna mispronounce it. What is it? No, you gotta you gotta pronounce it. I want to hear you pronounce uh, it. I got him. Uh, is it, it Sminsky? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you did it. Uh, but uh, so and they show up immediately, and then and then the commentators immediately just start. Talking about how, why they're weird and how weird they are. Oh yeah, Sminsky's got a foot fetish. Goldust thinks he's pretty. It's like, come on, guys. Well, Jr. does say not. There's anything wrong with foot fetish. Now we're trying to go wrong with it. I will. Yes, Jim. Jim Ross. Uh, <laughs> no, no, come on, on, on. I thank you, Jim Ross. I'm going to interject on you, Emerald. I did see a, a tweet recently with a, like an old school like heat match around this time where Schnitzky. Uh -huh. uh, decided to try to lick one of the competitors' feet, and uh, Tigrissom, I think it was Tigrissom, or Joey Styles, was like, oh my god, you can't do it, and Goldust was about to puke, and he just kept trying to lick that dude's foot, and Schnitzky was just, ah. and he did, I don't know if he ever did, but they cut it at the last minute, so yeah, that's yeah, just I've a named, foot I've named this tag team, uh, Team Footy Gold, so. <laughs> Go for the gold. Yeah, tell us about Footy Gold. Tell us about Footy Gold. Team Gold Bond is right there, and Aww. you fucked it up. Aww. Yeah, but what's he gonna do? Foot bondage? No, he's not, <laughs> he's not Chinese. <laughs> what do you mean? So true and real. Let him know. All right, Smack yeah. Smack Up guy shows up. Everyone starts being racist. Here we go. <laughs> no, that's the thing. That's, that's, that's Chinese I know. Thing. It's, that's I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just take. Let the joke sit. <laughs> no, I refuse to be in there in the ranks of Nico. <laughs> what? What does that mean? All right, tune in to We Don't Have to Rank This. Next week, we will rank how racist all of us are as a group. It'll be nine people screaming into a mic, including all of our guest stars. It'll be unlistenable, just like the U See No Evil pod that dropped uh, just now. seven months ago. Just now, currently. This is no, May 19th. No, May 19th. This is May, May 19th. 19th. Ah! May 19. Anyway, Emerald, what the Betty? What happened in this match? Well, so Gold Dust and Shinsky, uh, show up. <laughs> and whatever. No, it's good. His Keep it going. Is dumb. His name is dumb, and I hate him. Uh, yep. they show up. Gold Dust, let's fucking go. 
The only man in all of wrestling who knows how to wrestle. That's right. Uh, it is it is a tag team. So uh, we start off with uh, Schnitzky and one of those fuckers in the other corner. Now, I have to say, the Spirit Squad, I'm going to rescind everything nice I ever say about them. Let's they're go. Just, they're just constantly fucking cheaters. They're just a bunch of cheating whores. And the only way to avoid them cheating is to stay away from their fucking corner of the ring. Well, yeah. But nobody ever fucking does that. But we get some uh, good slams uh, from from Sh- Snitsky. Uh, <laughs> good slams. He's picking this man up, slamming him on the ground. Uh, they try to fight back, but he's just he's he's really tall too, so he's getting the drop on him. Uh, hits him to the corner, tags Goldust in. Goldust uh, starts going at him. Uh, and then there's a back and forth. Goldust does know how to fight, but then, then it gets weird. He's on the ropes and he's about to uh, do some sort of jive, but he gets mesmerized by his own gold, which I have never seen in any of his fights. So, <laughs> and then then they just start bullying Goldust, and it goes on for way too long, and Goldust keeps trying to get get to his tag team partner then he finally gets it about 15 minutes later and then uh they're doing good uh the spirit squad's trying to cheat again uh with two of the guys in the rings ref just absolutely awful job uh they he turns his back and then one of them uses that stupid fucking trampoline jumps over uh, the ropes uh knocks him out and uh they Crawl on top of him, lay, uh, do the lay down pin. That's a shit fucking pin, by the way. We saw it earlier in in the tornado match. Like, if you gotta pin someone, actually fucking pin him. That's I. This just makes me mad. I hate it. Strong it's disagree. This, this this match strong was really disagree. Good. This the, the, no, the match was not good. This finish rocked. This finish was yeah. Good that too, finish yeah. was awesome. Yeah, Mikey jumps from the. From the floor onto the trampoline, over the top rope, hits a bulldog, and then drags Johnny over to the Snickers corpse for three. That was cool. The rest of this match, nothing happened and it sucked. But no, it, yep. yeah, and Benny, I, I'm gonna kill the Spirit Squad. They're fucking fucking cheaters. I'm gonna. But you you just praised how how efficient much of a team, of a team yeah. they were. Yeah, 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 and then they cheat. I hate hey, look, yeah, but that means they're, they're good as a not, team. If you're not cheating, you're not trying to win. Did anybody yeah, else notice easy. the absolutely intergalactic negative pop that the Spirit Squad got when they came out? Oh, yeah. the yeah. camera cut to a bored kid. Yeah, the immense <laughs> booing. Not he was even wearing booing. a WrestleMania 21 shirt. Right. Yeah, just nothing. No reaction. I, I should look, explain that. That, that trampoline. Everyone. That trampoline for the entrances uh, was fucking was fucking jobbing on the Spear Squad. I swear, because yeah, nobody you... could get over the fucking top rope when they came in. Yeah, uh, uh, listen, a common theme with Nikki not being able to get over. <laughs> sure didn't get the rope. <laughs> they got the win tonight against uh, Chinitsky. Chinitsky. Or Ty gets into whatever he was going to talk oh, about. Oh come on! Can we also? Jim Ross at some point said mutter something about how they how they can visit prisons and talk about winning the tag team gold. Does anybody remember what the fuck he was on about? I have no idea. No, nope. nope. I, I don't I don't hear Jim Ross that much. Why? <laughs> he slurs his words. No, come on. He can't say that. He got palsy. <laughs> he can chuckle at that. What? Emerald shoots hard <laughs> on cerebral palsy. <laughs> Cerebral palsy. Cerebral. Cerebral. No, I thought. Do not let. Do not let him <laughs> see Eugene. Stop. Anyway, no, that match was a uh, pretty good. I liked it. You want to know why? Because Johnny and Nikki look great. Yeah. Actually, Damn. I take that back. Johnny looks great. Oh. Nikki is not there yet. As much as we can meme about how. Uh, Nikki is going to be good one day or bad or whatever, but Johnny looks ready. I think that was supposed to be the plan all along was to have this man fucking be like the star. And then they're like, hey, wait, Kenny? 
Ooh, Kenny. This guy looks good. And he's young. Okay, yeah. Because Johnny's fucking going crazy. Did he hit his uh, like Trouble in Paradise move this week? I don't have it written down, but maybe. Tremble he's just paradise. got like a very interesting move set, and he just looks very different compared to everybody <laughs> in this group. Mm-hmm. Does he? Yeah, like he just looks com- like uh, like work rate rate wise, just completely different. Okay. Uh, Mikey oh, uh, Mikey is very athletic, but he's not really like good in the ring per yeah. se. You know, you got Mitch. Like- Mitch is a tough enough guy who doesn't wrestle ever, so he doesn't look anything. Kenny's just very athletic, and uh, he's almost there. And Nikki can sell really well, but he doesn't really have any like interesting moose set yet so i think johnny's yet yet yeah, uh, you know maybe one day <laughs> He's, well they're developing talent yeah surely they're all going to become great at some point in time yeah every single one of them so i don't know like i feel like it's really good to have them as tag team champs and look like shine out there even as a unit if they're cheating it's fine they're bad guys you're supposed to boo them as martin says emerald when they come out and nobody cares that's bad. If they're booing, that's good. Because that means they care. Yeah. So, essentially, yeah, I thought it was fine. It made them look strong. Mikey looked like an awesome beast doing that little move. And uh, Schnitzky, Schnitzky's been impressing me. Goldust looks very, like, just not not ready. He should he should not be there. He, he, does, look, he does look like a potato. <sighs> Goldust is, I believe, drugged out as shit. At this time, we are not far from oh, yeah. Black Rain debuting in TNA. I this think. poor oh, yeah. fucking guy. Yeah. Real close. Yeah. I wish they would do Schnitzky like more shit, like t- against like squashes or something like that. Maybe build them back up, but maybe we missed the mark on that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he was schmoving a little bit when he got the hot tag at the end. Yeah. He gave the guy like basically a flying big boot. He like he like ran right into it. It was like a big boot from hell. I mean, but uh, last week got, they, had him, they had him. They had him. Uh, tried that big boot and he broke his back so i mean yeah i mean give up on it (laughs) we're actually about a year plus away from black rain oh no (laughs) yippee wait until black rain black rain yeah we have an exciting announcement at the end about like that kind of stuff but we'll we'll wait on that what what, what all what's next on this docket dude i'm I'm excited this this show's been pretty good so far even though there's been some negatives it's just different (laughs) Is- this is the first segment coming up that I would call actually good. Yeah. The rest of it's been inoffensive and like things that's, happen. That's better than what we've dealt with. Yes. Oh, yes. Hell yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And next, Rick Foley is going to come out and explain <laughs> himself. And our Rick Foley correspondent, Emerald, will take you through it. But first, Emerald, did you know who Terry Funk was who's going to show up? I do not know who Terry Funk is, but okay. he's, Kirby like Funk. he's been through some shit. Oh yeah. Can I? Yeah. Can I get just a quick, Ow. just a quick review of Terry Funk from somebody yes. that doesn't know who the fuck this is? You just can this spend guy. Thirty minutes if you want. Yeah. He looks like yep. a used purse oh. that has been through like, like, come on, floods, and has had just so much shit put in and out of it and then left out into the sun to dry and just shrivel up. I mean, you're not wrong, but you can't, oh, you can't say that. <laughs> is the probably the most offensive description that is also incredibly spot on. <laughs> oh, he is not wrong, oh but holy shit. shit. Wow. Poor Terry, yeah. man. Rest in peace. Emerald, he Emerald, just passed away he last a year. Dead guy. He just passed away last year, man. Come last on. Year? Yeah, dude. You can't <laughs> kill Terry. You killed Terry, you bastard. <laughs> All right. And and Big I want Terry Funk, I'm so sorry. No, it's and okay. Oh Emerald, if you can God. click that and go to 16 seconds and just give me a real quick review. I can, I can cut right. out any dead of What you see here. I don't know if editor Ty has the capacity to put this in the thing, I, but I will try. explain what happens if he can't. Holy shit, that man got kicked by a horse. Yeah. <laughs> and he was still up. Yeah, Terry Funk gets kicked by horses, and he tries to fight them. It's awesome. That's a shoot horse and shoot kick by a horse. Oh, 
If Editor Ty didn't show it, Terry Funk was in a match, pile gave Chris Candido, I guess, or somebody, I don't know, a pile driver in a barn, and then a horse kicked him in the arm, and he got up and talked shit to the horse. It was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, and also, Terry, yeah. real quick, Emerald, this man is like an OG deathmatch wrestler. The guy who gets out there and fucking bleeds to death every match and will just go oh. crazy, so... Man, yeah, he's I your wish type they of guy. Shown more of that. They you might see him. One, they showed one clip of him and Mick Foley in 1998. Yeah, it's Chainsaw Charlie. That was his name. Oh. <laughs> he came how up to old? the chainsaw. We'll get yeah, that. How, how old do you think he was on this show, Emerald? On oh. this show, I'm going to guess 64. 62. Ha! That's fucking <laughs> incredible. They got the 62 wow. year old man. When would you guess his last match that I can find on Wikipedia was? His last match? Uh, yeah. This one? <laughs> uh, 2017. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The carny blood in you does not go away ever. You just got to keep going. Imagine how much going. of a flooded hearse he looked like back in 2017. <laughs> 2017. From an online stream at the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Terry Funk and the Rock and Roll Express defeat Brian Christopher, Doug Gilbert, and Jerry Lawler. Oh, what? They went oh, for nine that's minutes. That's so sad. Wait, what no, that was 2017. They went for nine minutes. Yeah. Well, hold on. Wait, when did Brian Christopher pass? Was that 2018? Or was that, like, yeah. right before it? Yeah. July 29, 2018. Holy shit. Again knows when every wrestler dies. Well, that's Jerry Lawler's son. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. That's really sad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now talk about wrestling. Yeah, we are. All right. We <laughs> Dark side of the Foley. ring. He is coming out to the ring, and he's got to talk about what happened last week with him, Edge, and that quote-unquote from Mick Foley himself, scumbag from ECW. Oh. Uh, so Fair he enough. comes out starts, yeah, I, I, I got to talk about that thing that happened, and then he... Comments about him and some lady. I, I can't remember. Melina? Thank He's you. He's like, you want to know what I was doing with Melina at the premiere of that movie? Yeah. Premier Which I replied, movie. yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. See no evil. Be no evil. Eat her. Eat her. Uh, Nick's getting some ghosts. So what the like, fuck is that smell? What the fuck is that smell? Man. Uh, so we get, um,. He, he starts talking about the actual thing between him, Edge, and what? You got it. What, what was the guy's name? We well, got it. It was Kimbo. Tommy Dreamer. Tony Dreamer. Oh, Tommy. Tony Dreamer. Dreamer. Yeah, Tony. <laughs> Tommy Dreamer. I heard Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> I heard Tony. Tommy <laughs> I mean Dreamer. Okay. You know what? I'm just no. I'm gonna go with one name. It's either his, their first name or their you last. Could just say name. Dreamer. Not names anymore. Just say yeah, it's Dreamer. Yeah. Tommy. That's what he's still, that's what he's talking about. Don't yell at him. Don't, I know. Mick don't Foley yell at Sapphire. No, I love it. Apologizes to Texas about demolishing Dreamer, him and Edge, because they made a pact about how these ECW scumbags are coming in and, and claiming that. They're more hardcore than he is. When he and Edge made hardcore history that night, several weeks ago. Before and then Mania. he brings out this 62-year-old man with a band-aid on his neck. Terry Funk. He's so good. <laughs> you get... Terry. You get... Let, Listeners, this man walks out, old guy, he kind of looks like a biker, but just less leather. He just definitely has the headband on. And and they start going at about, like, Mick Foley's like, there are three things I will defend with my life. The honor of my wife, the honor of my kids, and the honor of uh, uh, hardcore wrestling. And... Harry's like, don't you get it? ECW is family. And family is ECW. And they start going <laughs> this back and forth about uh, how Terry thinks of Mick Foley as a son, as his own son. 
uh, they hug, they have a tender moment, but then Mick Fried Foley right is like, hey, about that, remember when I was Madison Square Garden and uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin was giving me the hardcore belt? You weren't there. And I was like, why wasn't he there? You were, you were my mentor. You were like a father to me. And it's because... And they told Mick that you wanted too much money to be there. And oh, so, what a bastard. Ouch. Bast- this is the most and best drama out of everything I've seen. Millions times better than any of the Cena, Edge, and Triple H stuff. Mick is, that's why Mick is a Hall of Famer, dude. He's so yeah. good. And so, so Terry. Good. So dude. good. And they get, yeah. they get angry. And, and, and so, uh, <laughs> Funk just starts slapping Foley. It's like, come on, Foley. Come on, show me what you got. Hit me. Hit Foley. me. And he starts, and you actually see the color <laughs> Foley's face start to leave, and the the uh, the announcer is like, "Yeah, he he's he's going pale. He's pale now." And then and then he finally finally gets him with like he called your kids are bastards. Uh, that WWE was nothing. And Foley just loses it. Oh, Sorry, and his wife's a whore. Uh, her wife's a whore. He insulted all Ooh. three things, and he starts going at him. Starts beating him up. And oh hey who, who who else is showing up? It's Edge. He's here to uh, <laughs> fight with his <laughs> new <laughs> friend Mick Foley. Uh, they start they they do almost the exact same thing they did to Dreamer last week. They just didn't destroy the man's crotch with the barbed wire baseball bat. Well, they respect Terry Funk more. Yeah. Also, they would have just ripped his entire lower lower torso off. Let's be honest. <laughs> Uh, but they hit him in the back with the bat. Uh, then he gets he gets the mandible claw with the sock, gets him, and then repeats. Uh, Edge spears him, almost almost in the exact same like camera angles as well. Uh, incredible deja vu. Yeah, but but so. Oh, and I skipped over the fact that that uh, when Edge and Mick Foley were at the sides of Funk. Lita fucking comes up behind him, hits him in the balls, mm-hmm. knocks him down. But anyway, yeah, so the triple threat uh, destroyed Terry Funk. Uh, Raw is the best show. Raw is the best show. ECW sucks shit. <laughs> that's that's what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I, we're and, Joe here. I think we can all agree ECW sucks. Yeah. Yeah, fuck ECW. Yeah, fuck Good ECW. thing we'll never... We'll never have to watch it or see it again. Woo! Thank God. But no, Mick, Mick's the fucking greatest. It was such like, a good promo. He's so yeah. fucking awesome. Such a great yeah. promo. Yeah, and I understand why you can't do this all the time. But, you know, most WWE promos, I say a thing, you say a thing. Mick and Funk are just talking over each other, most of this promo, and it works really well. And there are two things I'd like to add to this uh first of all after rick foley starts talking about how terry wanted too much money to be at his thing that <laughs> rick then says uh i don't know i'm not going to demand money to go to your funeral as long as i'm a dump like west texas <laughs> i would go for free <laughs> so i could spit on your grave it's so and good that also so good. rick foley looks uh Terry rather looks at Rick and says, "If I had a head like yours, I'd have it circumcised." <laughs> and then Rick turns around, and is like, "What?" And then Funk again says, "If I had a head like yours, I'd have it circumcised." Also, yeah. your wife's a whore and your kids are bastards. Yeah, that's no because Mick was okay with that. Uh, Terry Funk said his wife uh, was a whore. sleeps with other yeah. men. Nah, eh, whatever. Your kids are disappointments and they won't be anything. Nah, eh, whatever. Yeah. Then Terry has the audacity to say, and the WWE is stupid. And then Mick just fucking rages yeah, on him. Like, don't, say, don't say that about my company. Don't say that How about Dewey. You? Don't say that about Dewey. <laughs> Rick stands up for the WWE. Everybody, yes, send a letter to your Congress people standing up for WWE. Ricky stands on business, folks. Yep. Oh, also, 
I'm watching. We got Emerald's review. Dave, did you know who Terry Funk was? Uh, yeah, because Ty's harped about how cool Terry Funk was. Okay. But, I mean, look, as far as I know, yeah, he's, at this point, just some old guy who used to be good. Yeah, so that's... Terry also comes out here in sweatpants, dad shoes, and tall white socks. Yeah. So... Looking disheveled, but it's fucking awesome. Ty, if you haven't thrown a picture of Funk, I'm sure you did yeah, earlier. Yeah, look at him, yeah. Yeah, there he is. Look at look that, at look at that Funko Pop. Yep. <laughs> I'd buy a Terry the... Funko Pop. Look at that old man. <laughs> old Funko Pops. Can we get a That's Terry old. Funko Pop up on screen, too? Editor Ty is killing himself right now. Geeber, Geeber. Eater, eater. Eater. <laughs> no, genuinely one of the best promos of the year. Also, mm-hmm. there was one issue with it. Yeah? I sympathize with Mick Foley. Why? Because he said, okay, this guy that comes out talking shit like, oh, I love ECW. You should like your the company you used to come with all the time. And then he goes, I'm you're like a father to you. And he's like, you didn't show up when I needed you. Also. And now it's like, ECW. oh, now, I, now I'm like sympathized with the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And then, the, you know, like Mick wasn't going to do anything to Terry because he respects him. Then he just went off about his wife and kids and the <laughs> company that he loves. So of course Mick has to respond, and they kill the old man. So like the three things he said, he would defend with his life. I yeah, I just think that it's a little like like they're supposed to be the bad guys, but they're not. Because now it's like, damn, uh, Mick Mick was right. I gotta so, say that that Sockum spear that is so cool too. Hell. Yes, that it's so good, that. right? Oh, I love their finish. No, I hope they have some tag it, team matches because they need it. Yeah, well, at least we're getting one. What do you mean? Against who? Huh? Huh? Oops. Nico can see the future. Yeah. Nico, what? Well, I hope I, they team up. I, I, I watched Nico, one of next week's. Nico paper? saw the visions and got a future newspaper. I did. I mean, <laughs> I, I figured, like, you know, they're, te- they're teaming up. I mean, they're not just going to, like, have Mick set if he's, like, they're doing the finisher. they got to have a tag team match. Well, Mick hasn't had a match yeah. on Raw. Nico yeah, subscribed to week. lordsofpain.net. Oh, he's so not he going to have the match the, on Raw. He knows the match. <laughs> Is there a pay-per-view coming up with something soon? ECW. WWE Judgment Day. What? Judgment Day. Up, taking over, One Night baby. Stand was announced, so we're yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I assume they're building to one night stand, but maybe. I, I no, don't know. we're never not... seeing ECW again. <laughs> Fuck them. Well, that one's like a Raw SmackDown show. It's true. And... Yeah. So we got to watch that. That's one. right. And then never again. That's right. Stand up for the WWE. Fuck ECW. I'm true. There. Yeah. So yeah. make one yeah. baby face on Raw. Yeah. Now. Fuck TNA. Fuck Ring of Honor. <laughs> Fuck Wrestling Society X. Oh, come on. Which hasn't aired yet, I think. No, not yet. <laughs> All right. Fuck Wrestling Society X. Wow, come on, man. Fuck that Except one. Xbox. That guy. Let's, go Xbox. Let's go, Xbox. Let's go, Xbox. They need to bring the X Factor back. But, yeah, very I need good. The uncle. And now we go from good to bad on the good show because now we got Matt Stryker. Yeah. Before this, I have written down, and I don't know why, this is just in bold here, <laughs> HPNG going crazy in the iconic rhombus. <laughs> there you go. sick, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, right. I, I don't know if this will ever be brought up or if it was on SmackDown, but they did show like a See No Evil poster on a wall, but it was definitely Photoshopped in. It was like a building. They're like, See No Evil comes like out power. this weekend. <laughs> And it just didn't look right. And I'm like, Joe, wait, what is this? And it looks like, like they cropped the poster. <laughs> yeah, you can see the windows behind it. Up. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It, it, it looked yeah. like a giant uh, poster board on the side of a tower. But but you can yeah. see the windows through it. So it's just Photoshop <laughs> in the frame. It was probably just like a bad poster. Like they did the transparent poster. on the poster. So, so the people were... behind the building could get like sunlight in, you know? Oh, like how, like no, how... maybe maybe it was on Jacob Goodnight's castle or whatever. <gasps> oh, that was the place? Yeah. That was the place castle. where people will see no? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my people God. People will see no in there. No way. It's fucking good. <laughs> and oh, now man. we are going to see evil because yep. the teacher is here. Yeah. 
Yeah, Matt Stryker, does he know what the Roman dodecahedron is? Because he's so racist and hates immigrants that he can't get it out. Yeah. yeah. He, thinks, he thinks it's... it's yeah, he's the one who taught that to JBL. Come on. Hold on. Dave, he thinks it's what? <laughs> it's used to make gloves. That's a theory for that. But huh. it's not just a theory. <laughs> a glove theory. <laughs> well, class, it's time to start the bell because Matt right. Strike is in the ring. Shut the your fuck up. Out. <laughs> you know? Hey, hey, no talking. Oh, okay. No talking. This is a teacher teaching us, right? And like I said, him and JBL must have been having fireside chats or something because he goes straight into how everybody in this building's an immigrant. <laughs> which. I mean, technically true, to a degree, but not the kind of immigrants I think he's talking about. Definitely not. Yeah, and he says, if you're not smart enough to go to the University of Texas, you go to Texas Tech. What about Texas A&M? There's a blue, and then they show one guy. They show a guy wearing it. Yeah. (laughs) Like, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, he, it's no, he like, was booing, but yeah. he had a U-T-shirt. It's like saying, fucking, if you're not smart enough to get into Ohio State, go to DeVry. <laughs> it's Aww. rough if you're not smart enough to get into Ohio State, though. It's easy. It's true. Ooh. It's true. It's true. And, you know, and again, it, you guys, y'all are not smart enough like Matt Stryker, which is why you have to work a 9 to 5. He is your teacher, he says. And as soon as that hits, Eugene comes out with a foam cowboy hat. That is so good. I got. I, I gotta know. say, all the all the hate that this guy has had, and I'm sure continued to have after I migrated off of Raw Down. Mm-hmm. You you put a funny hat on him. I'm, I'm on his side. I'm on his yeah. side. <laughs> that true. hat is hilarious. It's true. Comes in straddling, oh, doing a little horsey do si do. He puts the hat on the ref and does a little. Put the hat on the ref him. and do si doing with the ref. Well, to be he... fair, he did start off like our like show on Raw Down with the worst timing and worst bit ever of him assaulting a woman backstage. Yeah. So I mean, well, it put know. a bad taste in our mouth. Yeah, and. Joe, I don't think you know this, but I have a secret Eugene segment I've been working on. Oh, God. Uh-huh. And it is going to be the best. Oh, well, look, viewers. I'm terrified. Stay tuned in. Yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting. It's taking a lot of research, but I promise you, the wait's going to be worth it. Like let me... <laughs> and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Yeah, if like you guys and send subscribe. us money. Hold on, let me do a bit real quick. If you guys got this far in the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share, share, share. Share, share. Get the Patreon. Send we us We don't have news. that. We don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> buy, buy a t-shirt. Buy a t-shirt on buy- Redbubble. Yeah. <laughs> buy your emerald tweets on a magnet. Put it on the shelf. Solicit us on escort websites. Do what you gotta do. That's right. That's Let's right. go. Anyways. We will give you our <laughs> iconic rhomboids. Yeah. Yeah. Rhomboids. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Rhomboids. But rhomboid gang. Now, while we're all excited for the segment and for you to join, like, subscribe, nobody was excited about this match. This match was boring. It's fine. I mean, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's not bad. But it's... let me tell you, my I, I got to give credit to Match Striker. He is all in on the teacher gimmick which makes sense he's a smart guy he's a teacher he's the second biggest baby face behind mick foley on the show <laughs> he's got he argyle throws... knee pads yeah which is excellent by the way he can teach einstein to einstein i am gonna say that's what they said on commentary it's true <laughs> yeah as as a teacher max striker is throwing some of the softest blows imaginable like he does one of those where he kind of like slides out of the ring holding the ropes kicks this thing looks so soft you could do this to your baby and it'd be fine <laughs> you heard who, who do you think punch your teachers hard like punch this guy babies. 
such an expert. Nothing looks like it has impact. <laughs> He's keeping Eugene safe, and that Eugene, <sighs> this jobber, is just getting fucking bummed out. Like, bummed out to this, man. And I will say, I like Matt Stryko's finisher, which is like that kind of like... It's a cool finish. Yeah. It's like an like, arm drag into a breaker. Yeah. yeah, he takes yeah. you to the library or whatever. Yeah, and it's like straight to the neck. I, I think it's good. It, it looks like if he hit that, it would actually fuck you up a bit. Like, I remember I took a pedigree once from a buddy, and that fucked the shit out of my back and neck. That fucking sucked. That looked like it'd be worse. So... It was a fine match. I think Eugene's stuff with him in the phone hat was kind of fun. I liked how Matt Stryker was disciplining the referee. Which, again, peak moves. Matt Stryker wins. You know, for such a nothing happening segment, it ends on a high note. Matt Stryker is going to get the WWE Championship. That's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. Not if yeah. Rob Conway has anything to say about it. That so. is true. Look at him. Just that look at true. Me. Also, why did Where this Rob? immediately fade out to commercial right after the match ended? It was so abrupt. I think Mick and uh, Edge took too much time. Because that was like 20 minutes almost. I think they went a little over, so they had to speed things up. Yeah, that's fine. What was he going to do post-match anyways? Yeah. Probably nothing. Sorry, right, we yeah, come back for commercial. Need to people to buy Cialis or whatever. So. <laughs> like, subscribe if you want, Nico, if you want to see Nico... Uh, Beat a bunch of kids up. Yeah, we got that true. unlock. Just send us money. We'll do it. It's <laughs> true. Hurting children's what I'm known for. Huh? huh? <laughs> we go to commercial. We come back. <laughs> the Sino Evil Tower is here. That's what the, the fuck is that smell? What the what fuck? smell? <laughs> Ooh. We get we get a recap of the opening main event. And. Uh, Love it. Come on, someone do something. <laughs> I thought you were going to finish right. the thought. Don't make me talk about the show. Don't make me talk about the show. You were going to finish the thought into the segment. Maria and Carlito. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. next is Maria and Carlito, and then I would take over. But all right. <laughs> that's, just that's fucking smack right up. out of battery. That's the smack up quality. He saw a segment transition happen several times. <laughs> he couldn't Game handle up. it. Nobody interrupted me. I wasn't used to it. Well, I thought you were going to finish your fucking diatribe, but all right, whatever, dude. Go to the tower. So Maria's talking with Carlito. He asked me about his match last week and how, you know, he almost beat Matt Stryker or whatever. Eugene beat, got lost to him this week. It's a bunch of nonsense. doesn't matter. Uh, she's like, do you like Eugene? He's like, I like Eugene. I'm fine with him until he gets involved in my match. One thing people around here need to learn is messing with Carlito is not cool. Very serious. I I always forget what Carlito sounds like and on the mic because he never talks ever. And then he just has a way more serious voice than I expected. And he always He's talks opposite third Brock Lesnar. He's Carlito. Carlito's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and he talks in third person. <laughs> um. When Marina, Marina says, but what is cool is Carlito's t-shirt. He, uh, he has his good old-fashioned uh, do you spit or swallow with the Carlito apple face on it. And she says, but I don't understand because you only spit the apple. He looks at her and he goes, I'll ask you the same question. What do you do? And she looks and goes, when I eat apples... Uh, Duh! Yeah, uh, I swallow. And wow. then the whole crowd goes, "Yeah, that's what I'm talking about." Yeah, man. yeah, baby. And Carlito has a little smirk. And he's like, "Good to know." God damn it. <laughs> that's that's and when that's you hear your... that's when you hear Nico going, "Yeah, oh my god!" And he's Woo! doing the SpongeBob little happy dance because he thought he got manager. He's like, "Yeah, finally." <laughs> You suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. But then squeaky boots and all, it hard transitions to uh, people's favorite thing. What? More That's sexual Vince? harassment. Yeah, dude. That's right. <sighs> A real dude. back-to-back here tonight, huh? Raw down the kings of it. Candace Michelle didn't look right. 
They, they bench. Well, what, well, I was going to say they've been better about it. Was Vince just outright groping Candice yeah. last week? Oh, yeah. Weeks ago? yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, and oh. yes. They've they, been better about it, though. They, they usually confine it. Sexual harassment. Yeah, they confine it to one segment, generally. Yeah, so backstage, Vince and Candace are just trying to kiss, and of course, his shitty son in law has got to interrupt him. Vince is like, come on. You know, it's the game. It's the King of Kings. What up? You know, you scratched my back. I scratched your back earlier with your match. Now it's time to give you a present. And he gives him the sledgehammer, baby. And he says he wants Triple H. I want to have you bash Shawn Michaels' head in tonight. Go get him, champ. Just a bit nothing, but like, I'm so sick of seeing Vince (laughs) and Candice. It's so gross. Yeah, I will point out. Yeah, it's horrific and awful and bad. But also, Candice is cosplaying as Nico Robin with the cowboy hat from Alabasta, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't a recognize real one her first. She was, wait, she was cosplaying as me? Yes. <laughs> me? That's what, yes, that's what Nico looks like. Sub yeah. to our OnlyFans Patreon. See his iconic cowboy rhomboid. Hell yeah. Join up. <laughs> Partner. <laughs> Partner. <laughs> and yeah. I'll give you a howdy do do. <laughs> At 5,000 patrons, Nico will say that from the back of a horse he's ridden to your house. How do do do? <laughs> How do do do? At 10,000, he'll hit you with the yes. 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 Yeah, fucking, they need to stop. It's gross. I don't even want to, like, even talk about it longer than I have to. And this is a man I... on screen. Bad. Cringe. Sick of this guy. And... Yeah, and this one. I hope he goes to SmackDown and Please. fucks around there. <laughs> never. He don't never care show about up that. VA show. Yeah. I hope he goes to Jacob Goodnight's house and gets his dick cut off. Oh. <laughs> and I, I'd say yeah. this because I know, like, I, when this episode releases, there's a bunch of stuff about what he did back in like 2019 to 22. But like, you know, it's 2036. It's old news, but it doesn't matter if this was before or after. This is still gross. <laughs> Yeah. It just makes sense that he would always write his own shit. Mm-hmm. He's just like, yeah, I'm going to make my crimes out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With an oh. ego like that, it's it's, it's easy. Yeah. You know? And speaking of crimes. Oh, uh, the Ekmo? next match. Ooh. Ekmo, it's your time, Dave. Ekmo's here. Well, you know what? I want Joe to do the honors of oh, introducing uh, our, you know, the the mic man for Umaga. I get to Joe, do you... that. Yeah, Joe, it's oh, your turn. You're shit. not here often, so. Wow. All right. Yeah, who's that in the ring? It who's it, that in the ring? it goes to commercial after Vince is done doing things, and we come back to just this this dapped up fella in the ring. The boy, the boy with the sausage pockets, That's Alejandro right. Armando Estrada. He said, "Amigos, right. my boy's gonna kill this jobber in the ring." <laughs> <laughs> Pero, <laughs> you're gonna die, dog. <laughs> you don't know who's coming out to the ring, dog. And I think this this uh, this uh, local enhancement talent also has no idea what's gonna happen because he looks pretty calm, looks pretty chill. He's like, all right, maybe we're going to have a match. All right. What is this Cuban guy with a bunch of uh, penises in his coat pocket yelling at me? He's like, man, well, the guy you're facing tonight is going to hang you. He's going to huh? decapitate you. He's going to crush you. The Samoan bulldozer, baby. This is what I've been hearing about. This, I, this is why I came to Raw. I had to see the legend himself. Umaga. Oh yeah, don't got yes, that. Yes, sir. Out show, oh my goodness. Yeah, the, so the few Ar- moments Armando... that I got to watch wrestling as a yeah. kid, I see Umaga kill a guy. Oh man, I'm hyped to see him again. I love it. Dude, yeah, I mean, who doesn't? Look, according to Armando, uh, he heard "Como se dice grapevine" that this is the strongest man in all of Tejas. Tejas. To, Tejas. The crowd then 
the crowd then jeers very loudly as no one cares about this man apparently named Chris Wellman. Chris Wellman. Uh, I didn't even bother to look him up. Oh, because I got he was, it. He was killed so... so uh, folks at home, this was the the hardest anyone has been killed by Umaga yet to date. Yeah. This poor man did not... He no did chance. not stand a chance. This guy is a small man, and he's on the Shawn Michaels vision plan. I just like <laughs> so you get the visual image. Yeah, you know, I know it's... Uh... <laughs> Not yet, but in the OA planning up. Yeah, well, here, uh, that, let me... this man's a twink. Come on. Oh, yeah. Here, let I me explain how he me. is killed, and then uh, you can give his eulogy, Martin. You looked up his, his will and testament. Uh-huh. <laughs> so the bell rings, and Umaga does not work by the hour. So he just runs across the ring, chops him, immediately paralyzes. Chris Wellman is no longer able to move or fight. He's been chopped. Maga picks him up, hits him with one of the grossest slams I've ever seen. Just really full strength throwing him down into the mat. Uh, Then just throws him out of the ring, lifts him up, stands him on the steps, turns around, reaches back behind his head, behind Umaga's head, to grab him around the neck, And then just slam him into the ground outside of the ring. Rolls him back into the ring. Hangs him up in the corner like usual. Hits him with the a million ton headbutt. Breaks his neck with his ass. Yes. And then you see Armando holding up the sausage in the background. Signifying it is time to end this man's life. And Umaga picks him up with one arm, tosses him into the air, and then spikes him into the neck using that momentum to slam him into the ground, killing him instantly. <laughs> gently, gently touches him as the ref, the ref gives him the three count to heaven. And that is the end of that man's life. That small man is dead. Editor Ty, uh, edit in your own suicide right here because it's the seventh time you've been called out to do something. Oh, <laughs> yep, there he goes. Oh, no, 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 we can't do that, can we? Suicide! Yeah, my, my, my editor, <laughs> Ty. Yeah, I guess before the eulogy real quick, Joe, you're having, like you said, you get to finally see your childhood hero in action. Um, Yeah, how did you feel about just the sheer brutality? That... This is awesome. This is exactly... <laughs> what the show needed this is this is what more shows need we need a guy that just comes in and will just straight up murder somebody enough enough of the back and forth enough story stop building it nobody cares about it people want to see this i want to see umaga rake a guy from his foot give him a spinning uh uranagi and then wheelbarrow throw a guy out of the ring crush all of his kidneys Give him a flying headbutt, and then Samoan spike him back into the ground like fucking Goku. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is I, that I will, shit. I will say, yeah, there's a lot of people who that keep doing like, especially with like, it's like too much back and forth, and sometimes you just need a killer. You just want to see a guy kill someone. Yeah. Every yeah. Day. Look, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to put it, guys, but it's just something about it. The only person, Joe, by the way, she didn't know who has stopped Umaga was when Ric Flair grabbed his dick. A, he and then scared him away. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Well, look, Ric Flair. Ric Flair knows the heart of man. It's in the penis. <laughs> so it's true. Well, now we should have. Uh, we should open our hearts as we hear Martin. Give Chris Wellman's eulogy as we go over his past accomplishments. Yeah, so Umaga may have actually killed this guy because he does not have all that much that I can dig up about him. Uh, Cage Match lists him as a guy named Chris Katera. He has zero ratings from anybody on Cage Match because he only has seven matches. His most recent one being, I think, either late 2006 or early 2007. A first-round loss to somebody named Sean Vex, 
an Anarchy Championship Wrestling's Under 30 Young Gun title tournament. Anarchy Championship Wrestling died during COVID, but it had a good run. The last holder of this Young Gun title was a guy named Rob the Builder. Hey! <laughs> the only title holder I recognize is ACH, who's That's a guy that showed up in WWE with a gimmick of, yeah, I smile, and then quit and accused him of being racist, and is probably right. Uh, but this Sean Vex guy had something of a career because the match was already over by the time I even got to most of this. I was just typing in, like, because I, you know, he's going <laughs> to win. I know. I watched him do all the cool slams, but I don't have to pay attention to the minute to minute. But so I had to pause the match to keep going on this research. So Sean Vex was in the game until 2016. And was the ACW heavyweight champ twice in 2014. So to Chris Gutierrez's credit, he gets jobbed out by champions, folks. But the most interesting thing I found is that in 2007, the ACW world champion was Jerry Lynn. Oh, oh man. Jerry Lynn? There you go. So shout out to Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Rest in piss. Oh, come on. Rest in piss. Is it main event time? Now, no, it's oh. time to learn about a show that should have died just like ACW. The because... SmackDown Rebound, baby. Yeah, Finally. Why, yeah. tell us about the racism that is being just exhibited <laughs> upon Rey Mysterio every it single week. It is insane. Oh. JBL goes on a diatribe for the past, like, three weeks, and then this episode included, so, like, four about how like Mexican people are all illegal drug dealer gangbangers and they all have machismo because they're all too stupid to know that they're their place in society. JBL like, whoa, whoa, dude. He comes out wearing a USA like uh like sweat jacket as the US champion. He just decided he was the number one contender for Rey Mysterio's world heavyweight championship. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. He he issued an open challenge to Rey Mysterio. He said, Rey Mysterio, you're a coward. You won't fight anybody. And Rey Mysterio idiotically is like, that's not true. I'll fight anybody. Uh, and then JBL's like, all right, fight the great Kali, idiot. Fight Mark Henry. <laughs> yeah, fight Mark Henry. Fight the great Kali. Nearly gets squashed like a bug by Mark Henry. JBL had to talk him out of destroying him. Yeah, Mark Henry climbed up to like the like the second floor of the area, like because they're at the the rampway, and he climbed up a, a structure and was about to splash Ray and kill him. And JBL had to talk him out of it. They were gonna kill Ray Mysterio. Poor this Ray. is our, this is our world heavyweight champion, by the way. Yeah, who also hasn't won a match on SmackDown yet after a since, since since the he, he won the roster. He won one match against Randy Orton. That was the week who, after that, who Randy Orton then got promptly suspended for doing weed or steroids. Mm-hmm. So, oh, this yeah. is one of the Randy suspensions? Let's go. Yes, yes. Because right after that, uh, the next week was uh, Kurt uh, fucking breaking Randy's leg. He's like, oh my god. Taz is like, I don't think we'll see Randy Orton for a while. Yep. I was like, huh, no way. <laughs> That's fun. But yeah, yeah, Rey Mysterio comes out. And just gets absolutely dog walked by the great Kali, and JBL just yells more uh, xenophobic shit at him. It's yep. Insane. There, I'll tell you because I saw this episode, you know, invasion and all. You know, I had I had to run interference for Raw down, but yeah, no, like I literally start the show. JBL just starts yelling fucking slows and racist diatribes Jeez. immediately. <laughs> It's like no seconds. It's like, yeah, we're here on SmackDown tonight. It's going to be a good episode. JBL comes out and just starts saying, Hey, hola, amigos. Hola, amigos. Ray, you got the machismo? You got the machismo? Me amo, Ray. Yeah, it's like, you got machismos? Illegals are everywhere. He's just like, I'm sick of all this machismo. And for, for every Ray match, JBL's also on commentary, and he doesn't shut the fuck up. He no. talks more than Taz. He overtakes Taz on commentary. Oh, yeah. my. Yeah. That's it, crazy. It is literally out of the 90 minutes 
of like airtime for this episode, it is probably literally an hour of JBL just being racist. How does the crowd react to JBL being racist? They hate it. Yeah, they hate oh, it. So they heavy booze. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's so, why he's doing it. Th- so this actually is a contemporary like thing he's doing at this time because I checked out the ra- the what was on TV for May 15th. And on all the major networks from 8 until like 8.15 or something, apparently uh, W was addressing the nation on immigration as some part of reform he was doing. Yep, that's oh. why he's doing the bit. Yeah, so. this was when the border crisis was like a big, big deal. And like from like 04 to 06, everybody was talking about this shit. And he, he's buying into it. And like I said, I mean surprisingly for the kind of crowd wwe normally gets again they hate this shit they hate jbl like it so it 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 works for the crowd and because of the time like it doesn't come off like oh the wwe is racist it's like oh this heel jbl is racist like you could not do this in modern wrestling you'd get your show canceled on national television you're uh martin i sent in the discord that's why he's doing the bit yeah yeah, I checked it out. Yep. Uh, you're going to have to patron student to wrestling with dialectics for any actual immigration reform talk. But mm-hmm. this is contemporary. Also, yeah. Raw is going up against Grey's Anatomy and also Grey's Anatomy, a two-part finale that got a 14.2 rating oh my. on Damn. ABC. 22.5 million people. If anything oh. got, like, a nine these days, that everybody would come. So anyway, it's going up against Crazy Anatomy, King of Queens, How I Met Your Mother, Prison Break, Twenty Four, oh, and Deal or No Deal. So it probably got there. slaughtered. Twenty Four and Prison tight. Break. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Prison. Yeah, Twenty Four was. Yeah, it was Prison Break into Twenty Four on Fox. Crazy oh, times the, we the, live the, in. The Wentworth Miller layup to Kiefer Sutherland slam dunk. I, I was there. I was yeah. there. Well, Prison Break is jobbing out because their ratings only six point four and twenty four drew an eight. Yo, what's the ratings on King of Queens, bro? Well, how's the ratings on doing? King of Queens got a five point four. That's right. It's not Hang bad out right there in the middle count. of mediocrity, bro. Yeah. And on TNT, the Eastern Conference semifinals were on Cavs seventy four, Pistons seventy two. What a dreadful, dreadful game that Yo, must have been. Rip Hamilton, let's go. Yeah, shout out Rip Hamilton. Le Mickey anyway, Mouse as usual. Yeah. Yeah, LeBron with the Mickey Mouse titles. <laughs> I don't think they won in 06. No. No. I don't know. I don't know who won that. No, they, get, they the get Heat. The Heat beat the Mavericks. Oh. My name is Heat. My name is I thought that was the year they got absolutely crushed by the Spurs. Nope. Yeah, that's or was that the year prior? Yeah, yeah, Wade got carried by the, by the refs. Mickey Mouse titles. All of them. <laughs> The only non Mickey Mouse title is the 1972 uh, Norfolk Races in the NBA Championship. Let's That's go. The one that was real. This is main event. Marty not wanting to talk about the main event. <laughs> no, the main event. So good. It was, it was so good. Was, it was Get, fine. Hey, hold on. I mean, it was fine, but there, there's one thing I have to throw out there. Okay. Is Shane McMahon the best special guest referee in WWE? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yes, is the answer. Uh, yeah, 100 percent right. He used to be a ref. Dude, well, yeah, but I mean, even as like special guest for special guest referees are different than actual referees. I mean, we know this, right? Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I'm just saying, like, I this match to me was good only because Shane McMahon's just fucking Shaneisms in this match. Which is awesome. Like, they're, they're throwing punches at the beginning, and he's, like, throwing, like, fake punches watching this. Like, he's so yeah. emotive and, like, the all over the place. few <laughs> main events have been mid-wrestling, but with at least one person as a special guest ref just doing bits the whole time. Yeah. So, like, it's mildly entertaining. But to talk about this actual match, before that, we get Shane and the Spirit Squad backstage... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, they're just like, hey, Shane, you've got Kenny's back, right? And they do a cheer in support of Shane McMahon. And Shane's like, cool, I guess. Mm-hmm. So now we get to the match. Jim Ross, Sean comes out. Jim Ross says he thinks this will be the professional execution of Shawn Michaels. 
<laughs> Kenny comes out. Triple H just sitting outside by the announcer's table, dissociating with just this blank look on his face the whole match, and just holding his cock out there. He's got it ready to go. Texas Tech is mentioned. Jim Ross says it may take the return of Buddy Holly, the coaching of Buddy Knight, everybody else Texas Tech can muster for Shawn Michaels to get the win here. Yeah. So, Sean gets the advantage early, knocks Kenny out of the ring, and then chases Shane McMahon around like a Benny Hill cartoon character for a while. Shane's just like, oh no, just flinging himself all over the place. Sean eventually, scary. yeah, Shane, Kenny, and Triple H have a huddle. Triple H just continues to dissociate. Shane then just starts trying to fight Sean, but then backs off. As Kenny tries to Pearl Harbor him and Sean defeats him. Much like as Triple H will find out in the newspaper in four years, we defeated the Pearl Harbor guys. Let's go. USA, am I right? Yes. yes. Let's go. It was, it was Triple, H, Triple H in his basketball jersey, Shane McMahon in his Jordan 5s. Just that we brought the swag to him. Oh, yeah, Kenny Triple H looking does. like a dissociate, looking like a skinny Chris Hero, as hard as that would be to visualize. Oh, you know, just, Chris Hero is not a giant, fat, shitty piece of fuck that isn't good at anything. Whoa. Anyway, so so <laughs> Shane gets so Sean's in the corner beating Kenny up, mm. and then Shane pulls him off. Sean's like, "What the heck, dude?" And then Kenny just starts beating him up, sends him over the ropes, over by H. And H grips up his cock. He stands up. He stares at Sean, but doesn't quite go for him. Sean recovers and once again defeats Kenny. Goes to the top rope. Shane throws Sean off the top rope. And then Sean kicks out of the two as Shane is doing a fast count. Uh, Shane then does a comical yawn, takes his belt off and drops it right by Kenny and turns around. Kenny grabs the belt and then just starts smacking Sean with it. Sean quit kicks out of another fast count, and then Kenny just starts outright choking Shawn Michaels with the belt right in front of Shane, who's just looking at it like, yeah, yeah, get him. Uh, so Sean, eventually this stops. Sean still has the belt tied around his neck, so like he's got a dog collar on, and Shane's like, Hunter, come on, come up here, use your cock, get him. But Sean fights out, so Triple H's cock does not yet come into play. Sean kips up, hits the 2K comeback, grabs the belt, goes to use it on Shane, who again runs away like a cartoon character. Sean climbs up to the top rope, staring at Triple H, who just sits there dissociated and stroking his cock, does not attempt to stop him. Hits the splash, tunes up the band, hits Kenny. Before he can pin him, Shane comes back in as the sweatiest man alive, double legs him, just starts beating him up. Shane then summons the dissociating Triple H. Triple H enters the ring with his cock as Sean is being, has his arms held behind his back by Shane. Shane's like, come on, do it. Hit him with your cock. And then Triple H goes to smack Sean with the cock, maybe. Or was it on purpose? Hmm. But Sean ducks, and then he hits Shane in the head with his massive todger. And Shane is dead. Triple H goes over and checks this man who is clearly still breathing pulse. And Vince comes running out from the back, again, showing an extremely rare show of compassion for Shane that he never would in real life. Summons a medic. Triple H's like, I'm just a little guy. I'm a small bean. I didn't mean to do it. I swear. And he leaves, cock in hand. And we get the ended shot of Vince sobbing and cradling his boy, moving his son who has sustained... Probably head and or neck damage. Just really wrenching his head around. Not what you want to do there, folks. But he's just sobbing. Cradling his son. Looking back at Hunter like, fuck you. And I was like, I'm just a small guy. He ducked. It's fine. And the show ends with just Vince sobbing. Holding his dead boy. R.I.P. Shane McMahon. Triple H's cock is too powerful. I I love the finish. is just gone. True. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it, like, just that image of himself, like, just so uncontrollably, like, his son, like, got fucking killed on the streets from a drive-by. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it yeah. was awesome. 
<laughs> and then like, over dramatic. He, yeah, well, well and, and his that, it's hand clear. was on the sledgehammer. He's fine. Yeah, no, it wasn't. I, Benny, Benny. What do you mean sledgehammer? No, no that didn't happen. No, 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 no. One, you're wrong. Two, I mean, part of it is like clearly he he's overdoing it because he just hates fucking. He he just hates Triple H for fucking up this win. Like. He's like crying and then he looks and he spends a good long second looking angry at him like, I'm gonna fucking get you next week, you son of a bitch. He goes straight back doing it. It's like, part of it is the over drama because he's a slimy piece of shit. <laughs> he doesn't care about Shane. <laughs> yeah, Shane got absolutely fucking ran over. He's doing the whole Peter Griffin. He's got the leg bent over the other way. Yeah. Shane's dead. And Triple H <laughs> looks at him after he hit him. He's He's kind of like how when you, like, are, like, play fighting with, like, your, like, brother or sibling or whatever, and then you accidentally, like, hit him too hard, but, like, like all right, hold on, you're, you're, you're okay, you're okay, Shane, no, don't, don't cry, <laughs> don't get loud, <laughs> and then Vince gets it, he's like, what did you do, and he's like, oh, whoa, whoa. dude, yeah, I, I, I love that little line, like, get trips gave out, like, I want you to see this before he went for the bam. Which, again, makes it more... Again, it makes it interesting, right? It's like, did he mean to do that? Did he not? We'll yeah. find out. Solid episode. Things happen. Finally. You know? That's all you can hope for, really, on these fucking shows, is things happening. The signs mm -hmm. were mid, but I will call out a few. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kings of Ohio, but the whole sign was upside down. Good job, Texan. Nice. It's pretty good. Uh, Typical uh, Texas uh, Ohio education. Typical Ohio, yeah. <laughs> Cena lose the title, please. No. Oh, come uh, on. Hey, ECW, look. ECW lives. That was that was like the first sign I saw at the beginning. I hope of the not. No, they got yeah. it. It's impossible. I mean, they, they never knew ECW died that night. ECW no. should have died in the womb. Fuck ECW. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, ECW Nikki died Bella. in the war. I posted a picture of it in the chat, uh, but during the Mick Foley Terry Funk segment, they like went to the crowd, and I snapped that picture. They just showed a guy on camera, a guy cheering. He said his shirt says "Danger Giant Penis." I miss so... that man. Let's go. <laughs> That's pretty fucking good. That guy is uh, the only thing that we should remember from tonight. Yeah, I, I, that, I will... that's a Texan right there. Yeah, you know. We haven't said much about John Cena, but I gotta say, I kind of like how he's, you know, he's not always the focal point of the show, even as he's a champ. I mean, he is, but like, I don't know. It's like, th there's some times where it's like every week the champion comes out, he takes 20 fucking minutes to talk, and then we see him at the end. I kind of like how he just kind of came in, did his shit, and left. Oh, hey, I have a question for y'all. Um, when's the Highway to Hell for Shawn Michaels bit gonna end? I am so tired. Never. Uh, uh, why would we know? We're watching the show live, pal. Yeah, this is live. It is 2006. Uh, We're uh, live, pal. If I had to guess, <laughs> and I'm not good at guessing. No, we are live. Don't listen to him. We are live. Nico I has just... swallowed cleaning supplies. He's seen the vision. <laughs> I am re-upping my subscription to WWE uh, Unlimited. Look, it's only going to last eight years, so you'll be fine. You've been Yeah, I mean, down. like, for John Cena. Oh, fuck you. John wow. Cena? Yeah. We don't care about John Cena, Joe. Yeah, he can't main event his own show, bitch. Yeah, fair there, enough. At least he ain't getting jobbed out to fucking every motherfucker. Doesn't he have a lower win count? Than... It would be... It would be hey. an honor for John Cena to job out to the great Dalip Singh. Rankings coming hey. soon. Hey, if we're making predictions, I feel like if there was ever a scenario wherein somehow Rey Mysterio ever won that shitty belt again, he would just get it immediately taken by John Cena, an actually good wrestler. I just have this feeling. What? No way. What? <laughs> what? No Whoa. way. What? No You're way. Telling me in 40 years, Rey Mysterio is going to lose to John Cena. Yeah, but John Cena would still be the good guy, <laughs> I think. This yeah. is the vision I'm seeing. I mean, I can't see either of them being the bad guy. It's, it's, it's 
kind of fucking hard. They're both such baby faces. But look, would you know who is the ultimate bad guy, and who wasn't on the show tonight? Who? Kane. Yeah. Thank God. No one of this episode was better. Stay I've, yeah, I've been I've been leaving breadcrumbs and rattly chains leading him all the way over to SmackDown. It's true. So oh, God. thank God. The you fuck does that sometimes? smell? <laughs> Watch see no evil, guys. Bye. Yeah. We love you. Mwah. Kisses. Bye Mwah. bye. Mwah. Bye Mwah. bye. Mwah. Keep it uh, right. Talk about Charlie Haas. Uh, Charlie Haas. I'm stealing all your rhomboids and taking them to SmackDown. Bye. Bye.